Now that we have our database set up and we've fully integrated our GraphQL queries with the database, I want to tackle some more advanced data fetching. So specifically, I want to set up pagination on my queries that give me back a collection of items. So a good example of where we're going to implement this is on our get courses query. So if we run that real quick, as you can see, we get all of the courses back. But you know, maybe I only wanted the first two courses or maybe the next two courses. How can we support that? Well, luckily with hot chocolate, it's actually extremely simple. So using hot chocolate, we can add an attribute to our query. In this case, we want pagination. So this is going to be use paging and import that from hot chocolate. And by default, this is going to set up cursor based pagination. So let's run this and actually see how that works. So if we look at our courses query, we can open this up and we can take some parameters. Let me refresh my schema so we can see that. And let's start off by just taking the first three courses. So we'll specify the first parameter as just a three it could be any number. And of course, now that we're using paging, this actually changes our GraphQL schema because we have to support all the metadata associated with paging. So if we open this up and look, we get edges, nodes, and page info. But where the heck is our course's data? Well, that is going to be in edges. So we can open this up and inside here we have nodes and on our nodes, our nodes are going to be our individual courses. So that is the data we want to query. So we can move all of this in here before we tackle all the other stuff on this query. So other than edges, we also have nodes and this also contains our course data, but we're not going to query this because we want to dig into the edges because edges has something else that we need. So not going to mess with that, but there's also page info. So if we look at that, that just has the last cursor, some other metadata. So is there another page after these first three is their previous page and then the first cursor as well. So in fact, I don't think I really want any of that, although I guess end cursor could be useful, but more importantly, I want to head back up to these edges that we're querying into. So edges, not only does it have our node with the data, but a node also has a cursor. And these cursors are used to specify the starting point in our pagination. So if we specified a before right here, before is a cursor. I know the name doesn't really stand out to be a cursor, but we would set before as one of these cursor values. And that would specify where we want to start the pagination. So we don't have a cursor right now. So we're just going to start from the beginning of our courses and take the first three. So let's see the data that we get back. And here we go. Looking at the response, looking at our edges, we got our course data inside of each node. And then we have our cursor. But most importantly, we only asked for the first three courses. Did we get that? One, two, three. So that's good. The limit on our pagination is definitely working. And then we got cursors for each of these. And if we look at our end cursor, that equals the last course that we got back. So if we grab this end cursor and copy that and specify that up here as the before value, then what's going to happen is we're going to get all the courses before the cursor of this course. So let's run this. And as you can see, now we only got those first two courses. So if we specify after, then it's going to give us all the courses after this MG equals equals cursor. And we're only taking the first three. So let's look at that. And here we go. We got different cursors, different courses, and we only got the first three. And now we got a different end cursor. So we could use that to grab the next three courses after these three. But I feel like we've demonstrated enough with this. So this pretty much sums up the essentials of how we can set up and use pagination with hot chocolate. But there's definitely other things I want to look at and some more customization we can do with this. And then I want to look into how we can fully integrate this with the database. So I'll explain that a bit more. But first, let's customize this a little bit more. And one thing that I find extremely useful with pagination is you can also include the total count. So this will still paginate all of the records that you get back, but it'll put some metadata that tells you how many total items there were before the pagination occurred. So let's see how that looks. There's some other things we can do here. So we can have a default page size that could be useful. Maybe we can set that as 10. So all we're looking for is the total count. So even though we're only going to take the first three and let's get rid of this after and let me refresh my schema down here in this page info. 
we do not have total count so i guess i was wrong about that and it looks like total count is on the root we can run this and we get the first three courses and we get the total count of seven so we have seven courses but we only took the first three so that covers cursor based pagination but there's also offset based pagination which i want to go over briefly so the reason i want to go over offset based pagination pretty quick is because cursor based pagination is really considered a best practice and is really what you should be doing i know other big companies like facebook also recommend cursor based pagination and i think the official graphql docs also recommend cursor based pagination as well so definitely recommend this but there's also offset based pagination and this is like your typical pagination where you specify a number of items you want to skip over and then a limit for how many you want back so to do that instead of use paging i've just copy this query i guess i'll have to give it a different name get offset courses and to specify offset paging we use offset paging and we can keep these same defaults and let's see how this looks in our schema i'm just going to copy all of this and open a new doc i'll have to refresh my schema as well and these parameters are different once i specify the right query so we want offset courses that's what we name this query and now we just have the usual skip intake. So we'll skip over the first two courses and take the next three courses. And instead of edges and cursors, of course, there's no cursors in offset based pagination. Instead, we get items, which contains our course data. There is still page info and there is still a total count because we enabled that. But on page info, no cursors, of course, there is just a has next page and has previous page. So I guess that can be useful to show off. Let's run this and there we go. We get three courses back. I assume we skipped two. It's kind of hard to tell because all of our courses are similar and then still got the total count and we do have another page after this. But nonetheless, still prefer cursor based pagination. It's usually more performant and also with skip and take, it can be a little bit flaky if your data is changing a lot. You could end up getting duplicate records back or skipping over records although usually that's not a problem so i'm just going to delete the offset pagination we're sticking to the cursor but speaking of performance let's talk about our database so with this pagination for example i was only asking for the first three or the first five courses back but we were getting all of our courses from our database and then performing that pagination so for example we can see that i've added this logging to our DB context. So in addition to using SQLite, we have log to our console. So we can actually see the SQL queries that are being executed. So if we run this, and I'm just gonna grab the first three courses again, and let's look at our logs. Kinda hard to find stuff in here, but I think this is it. So we are doing a select from our courses, but we're not applying any kind of limit on the amount of courses that we get back. We're literally loading all of our courses but we don't need to, we're not even returning all of the courses. So ultimately what I wanna do is pass our pagination parameters down to our DB context when we execute our database query. And the way I explain that is actually not what we have to do. All we have to do is return an I queryable instead of an I enumerable from our resolver and Hot Chocolate will automatically apply the pagination to the queryable, which of course is what NAD Framework uses to translate into a database query so we can't really do this in our repository because we have to dispose our db context from within this repository which means we can't execute database queries outside of here which is what we would be doing if we returned an i queryable from a resolver and in addition it's not really a good idea to have a repository return an i queryable so instead what i'm going to do is just copy this and make some changes so that we can use our db context in the way that we want to so i'll call this get paginated courses and we'll just remove pagination from our old query it's just not efficient the way that we have it set up i want to actually apply that pagination against our database query so since we're not going through the repository we're gonna inject our db context directly into this method so that's going to be a scope service that hot chocolate is going to resolve this is our school db context and in order for hot chocolate to actually inject this we are going to have to specify that we want to use our db context and then the type of our db context is our school db context and one thing i want to point out is that the order here does matter 
So we have to use our DB context before we use paging or else this is not going to work. So in order for this pagination to be applied directly to our database, we have to return an I queryable, which basically represents our entity framework database query. As we mentioned, no longer using our repository. And instead, we're just going to directly use our database context. So we're getting our context. We're querying into our courses. We're going to map our courses into course types and then just return the I queryable that use paging is going to do to finish off the query by applying pagination. So this actually doesn't need to be async anymore so we can remove that no longer a task and let's do this so still got the database stuff logged so we'll actually be able to see how use paging does that pagination but we did rename our query so for pagination we want to use paginated courses that's the name of the query and let's do this and there we go we get the three courses back still got total count as well and let's look at what Entity Framework did. So i got to find this. And here we go. We're selecting from courses. But as you can see, we also have this limit. So we're no longer pulling all of the courses from our database into our application and then doing the pagination. We are applying the pagination directly to our database query, which is going to be much more performant. The only downside I can think of is that now we're using our DB context directly. So we don't have our repository wrapping our database queries but i really don't think that's a big deal i've actually seen a lot in the community lately that repositories are dead and that we should just reference db context directly or you should implement cqrs and then use your database context in those queries which i like as well but yeah i don't think it's the end of the world directly using our db context here it's certainly much simpler so maybe i will kill my repository and it also gives us the optimized query where we're not pulling all of our courses into our application. So hopefully you can apply pagination to your own hot chocolate GraphQL server. All you have to do is specify this use paging attribute, and that's pretty much it. I guess you could also use offset paging if you really want to, but cursor pagination is preferred. And then lastly, if you return an I queryable from your resolver, then the pagination will get applied directly to your database query. Anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.